how much a lens like this will cost. Final pricing is not set yet on this lens. It comes in uh, at about. This is a Cinedy Gear News video. Hi, I'm Johnny from Cinedy, and I'm here with Stash from Fujinon Fujifilm. How are you? I am fantastic. Thank you so much for coming to visit us today. Thank you very much for inviting. And the reason we are meeting is because of this little beast. This, this tiny little lens. Yeah, we're very excited to show for the first time in the world live the new HCK 25 to 1000 millimeter native PL mount lens. And of course, the question is PL mount on a kind of a broadcast TV lens. How does it work together? Yes, yes. Well, you know, uh, what we're seeing in the market everywhere now is that cinematic look, the shallow depth of field, the color space of cinema. Directors and content producers want to have that, and they're, they're moving into different applications, be it sports, live event, uh, concert touring, house of worship, uh, even in studio. Uh, and like I was saying earlier, there are lots of portable lens options for that. The shorter focal lengths, handheld focal lengths. What's missing in a native PL mount, um, in a native PL mount lens, is those longer focal lengths that give you the faster speeds, the f-stops that can work in the darker theaters or at night in facilities. So that's where uh, where the market has been looking for something just like this in a native PL mount. We can do it with adapters to two-thirds inch lenses that exist all over uh, today, but when we do that, we lose light, of course. That comes at a cost of light, and it comes at a cost of optical quality when we start to use adapters. So this, we can pass the full cinematic performance of this lens to the camera without compromise. Stash, let's talk a little bit about specifications. The PL mount and the focal length is very interesting here, and also, Aperture wise. Yeah. So let's just, uh, for the sake of specifications, what are we talking about here? So we're 25 on the wide to 1000 mil. It is the native PL mount, so it's a super 35 image circle, 28.5 mil image circle. It's an f2.8 at the wide end. There will be some ramping, so at 1000 mil, we're at an f5. Additionally, in the turret, there's an expander. So there is a 1.5 times expander. So here on the Venice, we're set up. Uh, in 6K, 17 by 9 full frame, with the expander engaged, we're getting that same angle of view. Um, if we were to run the camera in 4K in Super 35, we could then use that expander as an extender and get a bonus 50%. So actually get out to 1,500 mil on the long end at a cost of one stop. So the moon was was never so close. The moon was never so close, you're right. Yeah, You don't need a spaceship to see the moon anymore. Tell me please, don't you think operators will have hard time to operate such a lens with um, a bigger sensor, PL mount all together when it comes to focus, shadow depth of field and so on? We anticipate there's really going to be two groups of operators that are going to be taking advantage of this lens. There's going to be the traditional operator that's worked in sports or in live events. They're, they're used to being by themselves on the camera. They will, they will operate. They will zoom and focus. Uh, of course, the iris and that will be taken care of by the, by the video shader back in the control room. But then there'll be the cinematic, um, the cinematic type events. So there, we fully anticipate there'll be a, there'll be an operator, but then there'll be a separate focus puller and a utility to help set things up. Uh, in that case, we will interface to the uh, the wireless fizz unit, so the Prestons and the Aries of the world, whereby they can use the devices they're comfortable with. They will calibrate to this lens just like they would another Fuji, like a Fuji Cabrio lens, uh, with our motors there, and then they will be able to control focus and iris from their fizz unit and the zoom, of course. Uh, but the operator would probably be doing that. But they can focus from there the way they're comfortable. So we don't have to change the way they work. How about accessories for that specific lens? Do you see this anytime coming? Yes, yes. I think accessory-wise, there's going to be some need for new accessories. We're talking to some of the big accessory vendors now. Things like matte boxes, the front of this lens, it's a 220 millimeter front element. That's the secret to getting those kinds of f-stops at that kind of focal range. So we're going to need some, you know, some matte boxes that can fit the front of that. 
we're definitely working with the with the filter companies now, so we'll be able to do rear filtration between the uh, camera mount and the the sensor. So there will be the opportunities to, to filter this uh, this lens as they would as well with some of the, the filters they like to use. When we talk about glass quality, is this is more broadcast glass quality or premise style or somewhere in between? This is going to give you the cinematic look that you're used to seeing. In terms of um, in terms of the performance here, there, there there's not a camera uh, on the market today that that, that will will overperform this lens. In my opinion, uh, we're not um, we're excited to, to to see the images that come off this for sure. Image circle limitations, of course. Uh, you know, we're again we we have to pick a, an image circle as a lens vendor. So we're the Super 35, the 28.5, and we have the 1.5 times expander that'll let you get to the bigger uh, bigger full frame cameras but then within that that that's where we can work image circle wise optical performance wise uh, we expect that this will intercut very beautifully with with our other cine products and you know what's going to be really exciting is to see how the directors can can storytell in a different way start to use focus to, to, to draw your attention be it in sports or in concerts or in theater where Previously, they would intercut between cameras to draw your attention to different things. We're really going to be able to isolate the, the and, and build excitement and anticipation around a lot of the things in, in these various live events in a way that we've never done before. Stash, did I miss anything before I say thank you and goodbye about this lens? I'm not even asking about the price, but I would ask about availability. I was going to say, so these are the only two in the world today. Uh, these are pre-production samples. The first production run will deliver in the world uh, in March of 2023. So we're just four or five months away. Uh, and then they'll be coming every month after that. So, so we're real excited to have production units. Uh, and we'll have those... Uh, over in North America at NAB, and we'll be excited to show them there as well. So, um, yeah. You know what, I will ask about the price. Actually, I'm very curious, how much a lens like this will cost? Final pricing's not set yet on this lens, but we anticipate it'll be right in line with where we are on our 125 times, which is our premium two-thirds inch box lens. And it comes in uh, at about $245,000 US at a list price. So it'll be in that ballpark. Well, it is what it is, no? You pay for quality here and for the zoom. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, per, 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 per focal length, it's not so much when we divide by that. <laughs> Stash, thank you very much for sharing the information. It was really a pleasure talking to you. You're very welcome. Thank you so much for joining us here at Interbee and helping us share the exciting new product uh, launch that we have here. Guys, thank you very much for watching and please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you.